Hi everyone, it's been a few years now since I started making YouTube videos and some of the early ones, honestly, well, the information was pretty good, some of the quality was poor. All I'm going to do today, I'm going to have a little bit of a remake. We're going to be looking at spiral or gyratory roundabouts and hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing a little bit better and hear what I'm doing a little bit better. So what is a spiral or a gyratory roundabout? Well, they are usually, simplest terms, big roundabouts that connect motorway junctions. Sometimes it will be where motorways end or even where one motorway joins another motorway. And they're usually in areas that have many different junctions coming off from all different directions and this spiral design is a way of managing the traffic flow to be honest there's not much mentioned about spiral roundabouts in the highway code and there's very little advice on how to deal with them i did my original video back in 2014 and if I was honest the information hasn't changed how you should go about doing them my opinion stayed rock solid it stayed exactly the same as it ever was and what you need to do with them is going to be explained a little bit further up but my little grumble as always I'm always having a moan recently but my little grumble is that there's usually no way to distinguish whether it's a gyratory or a spiral roundabout compared to a normal one. And you have to deal with the roundabouts in a different way. Okay, so you have to deal with the roundabouts in a different way. And if there's no way of actually telling that as you're on the approach to a particular roundabout, how do you know what to do? So it's poor planning. They come up with these designs of roundabouts and the spiral ones, if they are used correctly, they do do a good job. But how do you know whether it's a spiral roundabout on the approach? You've got no idea. So that could be something that the road planners could look into. What about putting something on this sign coming up to say if it was a spiral roundabout? This one's not. So we're turning right towards Manchester M57. So I need to be in this right side because it's a right turn. But on spiral roundabouts, like we'll see shortly, the uh, way to do them is a little different. So let's get up onto the motorway. I'm going to go down a few exits and head to the same roundabout that I did the last video on. Um, a roundabout called Tarbuck Island, which joins this M57 that I'm coming on to, and it joins the other main motorway in Liverpool, the M62. So we'll head down there and go and have a look. So how are spiral roundabouts different? Well, you have to do a few different things. There's a couple of, they're not any rules in the highway code, they're just sort of Ashley's rules that it's quite good to follow. You've got multiple exits all the way round and it can't work just like a normal roundabout where you normally think anything up to imagine a clock face 12 o'clock use the left lane and anything from 12 o'clock around the other side use the right lane it doesn't work like that on these spiral roundabouts but a, a simple way to think about it is that the first two exits are serviced by the left lane if you're taking the third fourth fifth sixth or so on exit on these roundabouts you will need generally the right hand lane and that's the first thing that's different. If there are three lanes on the approach, you're gonna to have to work that out as well. But generally, 
the left lane services the first and the second junctions. We will have a little look at this. Then, what you do when you're on the roundabout, you should never have a need to move to a lane to your left. What actually happens on these spiral roundabouts is that you keep moving to the right until you find your lane that you need to be, or where you need to be, and then you stay there, and then that lane, the way that the roundabouts are designed, spirals off and takes you to your junction. So there shouldn't ever be a scenario, unless you've got it wrong, unless you've read the road wrong, there shouldn't be a scenario where you have to move to a lane to your left. But it does happen, people do make mistakes, and we've got to be accommodating of that as we do our spiral roundabouts. Don't get yourself next to someone's blind spot or in a position, if they were to move lanes, that you'd have a collision. Stay in a little space if you can. And it's that lack of doing that which often causes issues and accidents on these spiral roundabouts. I've had an accident on one of these spiral roundabouts and it was a van who moved straight across from the third lane all the way across into me and I was in his blind spot and he is, there was just nothing I could do about it to be honest, he just came straight over. Um, but again, that's a supposed professional driver not following the rules and not doing things in the way that they should. But do I blame people for this? No, because the majority of people when they learn to drive didn't have a clue what spiral roundabouts are. And there's going to be some people who are watching this video now who are going to be thinking, it's a spiral roundabout. We generally don't have to teach spiral roundabouts when we're teaching people to drive. I do. I always make sure my pupils have an understanding of how they work. But there's not a need to generally because the motorways aren't going to be included within your test, although fully qualified instructors are allowed to take pupils on motorways now. There's no general reason for instructors to do that. So therefore there's a big gap in people's knowledge and then they come to have a go at these and then they've got no idea on what to do. So this video is needed. It's um, it's information that people are generally lacking and that's why I decided to do a little bit of a remake. We're not that far off coming up to the spiral roundabout now and what I'm going to need to do, I'm going to need to find this uh, middle lane because the left lane a little touch further up heads off onto the 62 and then we take a junction a little touch further that heads us down towards the spiral roundabout and we're going to be following the signs for Heighton A5080 so A5080 and uh, we'll have a little look at it. I'm going to try and point out the sign I'm going to try and have a little talk through of what I'm doing as I'm doing this roundabout to give everyone an idea. The exit that we're taking is all the way around the other side of the roundabout. So if I knew this maybe the sat nav was telling me to turn right at the roundabout coming up, um, count your exits first of all, and if it's third, fourth, fifth, sixth or so on, remember you need to use lane two on the approach. Traffic conditions look pretty light at the moment. There's no one around me. Um, hopefully, this will then lead us to have a nice, clear, easy route so I can point out certain things regarding the signs and the road markings and what to do. So we're not taking this first junction off the M62 East, we're taking M62 West, which takes us towards Tarbuck Island. Again, no one around, no one to signal to. You wouldn't say, excuse me, in an empty room. So off we go and use lane two. So if you have a quick look at the sign on the left, it's Heighton A5080, the final turn that we're actually taking. It's traffic light controlled. A right signal for me is required. And 
until you find your way into the lane that you're going to. Because we are taking the final junction, we're gonna have a number of moves to the right that we're gonna to have to do. But the key when you're doing these is not to look at the floor in front of you, is to look far up and round at signs and maybe um, other gantries or, or anything further up round roundabout that can tell you what's what. So I'm moving to the right now until I find myself in the heighten lane. Again, green sign. I've got to go further across. So you keep moving to the right and moving to the right. This first marking on the road, M62 there, says that the next move across will take you past the M62. There you go, M62 is in that lane. Look round the corner, heightens now the middle lane. So I'm not keeping my signal on anymore and I'm not moving further to the right. So all I did, I kept moving to the right until I found myself in the correct lane. Heighten is this particular road and as you'll see it just then spirals off. I've gone from the right hand lane that I was in, I haven't lane changed and now I'm in the left and that's how they work. People do too many lane changes this way, that way, this way, that way. A lack of planning, yes, but a lack of understanding, cameras just fell off, but a lack of understanding on how they actually work and what you should be doing with them. Signal to leave isn't required. It's the only way we can go. That junction in front is controlled by lights, so no problems. So that's our first attempt. Have you ever done anything different there? Are these roundabouts new to you? Let me know in the comments. So as you can see, you deal with them totally differently than you would do a normal roundabout. And there's often problems because of this. So the information on these spiral roundabouts, it's not readily available. So that's why I'm giving these a little bit of a push. If we have a little look at it from a different direction, I'm not going to take um, a junction all the way around. What I'm gonna do from this direction, I'm gonna turn around in a moment, um, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to take the road that's directly in front of us. And I'm going to try and point out why it would be a problem to use the left lane. I know I've explained a little bit about already, if you're taking the third, fourth or fifth junction, you need the right hand lane. But if you didn't, I'm going to show a few little uh, examples of how the road markings work and the dangers that it can cause. And also, this is going to allow you, even if you are doing it correctly, to spot the people who aren't, because there's numerous times on these type of roundabouts where, say I've had near misses, but you have to accommodate the other people who don't know what's going on. That shouldn't be the case. That's uh, There's a lot of things lacking in a lot of areas that's caused this problem for spiral roundabouts. So let's get whipped round and let's go and have a little look at them. So let's have a look at this roundabout now from a different direction. I'm again going to be following a 5080, but this time it is the Cronton turn that I'm taking. I know that it's this lane. I know that you need this lane, but have a quick look at the sign from this direction. Cronton A5080 is directly ahead. So how many people would have used the left lane? But let's just be conscious here of where the left lane goes and this is going to clarify my point about the left lane is for the first and second junctions so as I go on to the roundabout if I look under the bridge it's the furthest right that I take so the left lane could have gone in there but I could have stayed in this lane but it did need that extra move to the right and that's all I've got to do I'm really glad that those lights changed as well because you can see the left lane now heads off towards this next road and Whiston. So if you'd have been in that left lane, you would have had to have done a move to the right to get any further round. And that's where the problem comes. But again, it's just a lack of being taught these things when you're probably learning to drive. So I'm aware of this van just in case he's got it wrong. I'm just staying this side of him. 
he should be going onto the motorway. He shouldn't need to move across, but notice how I've just kept back just in case. And again, the uh, road spirals off and I head round. This time, I am going to signal to leave because this junction is not traffic light controlled. So therefore, if there were any vehicles coming out, my signal would be a benefit to them. But if the junction coming on is traffic light control, they're not looking for where you're going to decide on where to move off themselves. So it's irrelevant. I've made my way round the block, if you like, and we're just coming towards this roundabout again. I'd like to have one last go at it just trying to explain to people a little bit more about where to look and a little bit more about the road markings. When you're on these roundabouts, the road markings do tell you a little story if they are painted on the road in the correct way. The nearest one to you should be the first junction that that lane heads to without you lane, lane changing. So for example, if we saw Cronton A5080 of the first one of the markings in front of us, we know we don't have to then move lanes to actually go across. If we saw Cronton and then we saw M62, the next one, the second one means that you've probably got to do a lane change to then get into the M62 lane. I hope that makes sense. But we can't guarantee, sorry, I was just ready to go on the horn. That fellow was drifting across and that's uh, one of the worst nightmares when you're on a fast road doing 52 miles an hour and someone comes out. So back to what I was saying, um, not all the spiral roundabouts are going to be painted in that way. Sometimes um, there's, poor planning goes into how the road markings are actually uh, put on the road. So I'm going to let us have a little look at this. I'm going to be heading towards the M57, so it's a right turn. It's more than the third or more than the second junction, so I'm using lane two as I go on. So the first sign that we just saw on the road there was heightened. So that means if you are going to heighten from here, you don't have to move any more to the right show you what I mean by that. You've got time to emerge safely. So I'm into the furthest lane and now if I was going to heighten I don't have to go further over but I'm going to go for the M57. So here it says M57 is the next road. So what I'm getting at is now I shouldn't have to do any more lane changing and that's the point that I'm getting at. But you cannot guarantee that all spiral roundabouts are gonna be as well marked as this. These markings though, should be the final sort of like rubber stamp to it. They shouldn't be the sole thing that you're looking at or not on the floor. You should be trying to get your eyes all the way around to that sign and see an M57's middle lane so you know you don't have to go further over but there are many clues that you can pick up on to actually help you negotiate these spiral roundabouts even here very very cautious I know I was coming past a couple of the vehicles there I was very cautious to just be ready in case someone's going to do a lane change um, I'm cautious for some reason I'm picking on that grey Audi there. Um, I'm cautious of this Citroen because he did a lane change before where he was a little bit late doing it. Just being aware of people, not sitting in this one's sort of blind spot and just keeping back until I know that they were going further round. So spiral roundabouts can be a little confusing. I hope that that little demonstration has given you a better idea on how to negotiate themselves or yourself and also hopefully it will give you an idea of picking up on the people and there are many of them don't forget picking up on the people who can't do them properly and that includes these lorry drivers and everyone to be honest so keep safe on them keep your eyes peeled and uh, hopefully that's been a big help i'll see you all soon